Early in the year, you were talking about how Nick needed to be a little bit more patient. I remember he struggled, you know, in the preseason, what have you. Where has he made the biggest strides as a running back? I think some of the patience that he's, he's uh, demonstrated over the last couple of weeks, uh, and even once we got into the season, you know, really when he struggled with the, was that was with the first preseason game uh, in New York when everybody was pushing the panic button. Um, you know, he just went back to work, and it's, you know, it's different. You can say what you want. Practice is different than games, even in the preseason games. So the first time you visualize, uh, you try to visualize yourself in practice. But once you get into live game speed, whether it's against in the preseason or uh, during the regular season, it's just different. And I think he's made strides uh, in all those areas. Uh, Baker Mayfield is very um, complimentary about Greg Robinson last week. How is he going to make your uh, Robinson going to make your offensive line better this week? Well, if he if he plays the way he did last week, he will make us better. Um, all those guys up front, they did a tremendous job last week. They worked their tail off, uh, you know, last week, and and uh, you know they did. They were very efficient in what they did, um, and uh, the other ones working too. So we'll see how it goes. Nick, do you think? How big of an adjustment do you think it was when he had to step into that starting role when Carlos was traded, and how has he handled that since he's been the guy? Uh, Nick is, you know, Nick's a consummate pro from the standpoint of he prepares every day and he's all work and business and, and things like that. So uh, it wasn't a big adjustment at all for him. You know, he, you know, of course, everybody wants more carries and touches and everything like that. He just. It came to fruition, uh, you know, a different means than he necessarily saw. The thing that impressed him about Nick is that he's always pushing that pile, and each yard it seems like it, you know he fights for each and each yard. Um, is that something you stress with him, or was he just when he got here that's how he was? Well, I mean, that's of course that's what we saw on tape, you know, and uh, you're not going to change somebody's physicality. Uh, you know, in six months or whatever. So we saw all that, but we continue to stress. You always want to fall forward as a running back or any any position that you're carrying a football with. You always want to fall forward because that one yard matters, you know. Uh, when it's third and one, you're going to wish you had that one yard uh, prior to that. So um, it's something we stress, but, uh, you know, Nick has good body lean and good body posture when entering the pile, which allows him to follow uh, fall forward. Greg Williams was saying he had this conversation with Baker about expressing to him, hey, we got your back. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Let's just go. Do you think he was restraining himself a little uh, previously? Yeah, yeah, he may have. You know, that'd probably be a question for Baker, but uh, I don't think you can play this position scared. And I don't know that he's ever played it scared. Um, I think sometimes you got to say, you know, whatever happens, happens. I know the good ones. Uh, uh, throw four picks or whatever, and then the next time they get an opportunity, they're going to try to fit it in a window about the size of a, uh, a window. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they don't care. I mean, they they don't care what happened the previous play, and they have short memories. The good ones do, and I've been around a couple of good ones in Carson and Kurt. Uh, the good ones have very short memories. The good offenses have very short memory. Uh, you know, like it's like I tell running backs, you know, you've got to have a short memory. Uh, you know, if you go uh, one yard gain, one yard gain, one yard gain, and then a seven yard gain, well, that's four carries for, you know, whatever yards. Are you looking for four yards a carry? Well, uh, we tend to look for more consistency than that as far as, uh, like last year, we were, last week we were only four yards a carry on offense, but we we're very efficient. Um, from the standpoint of uh, getting what we needed to get to stay ahead of the down and distance. And even on some third and twos and some third and shorter uh, routes if or runs, if you get um, two yards on third and one, that's a good, efficient run. So it's the same with a quarterback. You've got to have short memory, uh, not let the previous play affect you or the previous game affect you, and just play the next play like it's the first one. How important was it for you to get Duke Johnson involved like you did and just how valuable was what he gave you? Well, again, uh, you know, we've got certain playmakers we definitely want to get the ball to, and uh, we try to devise opportunities for them to get the ball. Uh, some of Duke's last week were design plays, and some of them was just Baker doing a good job of finding his check downs. Um, you know, uh, I had a coach tell me one time, if you don't throw it, they won't cover it. 
and defenses get paid and defensive coordinators get paid around the league from from stopping you. So if you're going to stop yourself by not using an attribute that you may have, then they're not going to cover it. And that's just what we kind of try to stress. How about getting um, Brashard Perriman a little bit more involved and do you see a greater role for him going forward a little bit? I think he's working and he's going to try to continue to get better, uh, just like we do with all of them. Um, but, you know, he's really put some time in from a mental aspect of things to know what to do. So he's putting himself in a good position to do that. But, yeah, he's got good speed. He's demonstrated, uh, you know, good hands for us. And uh, we're only going off what we see. And what we see is a, a player that's very hungry to get on the field. And uh, he's tra continuing to work hard to do that. Uh, keeping the ball away from the explosive offense like Atlanta uh, between taking shots down the field. Yeah, you know, that's the, uh, that's the fine line you're walking. You know, if you take too many shots down the field, then you're off the field and three and outs if you don't connect any. But if you do, uh, everybody's tooting your horn. So, you know, what we try to do is just be consistent on first down, be consistent on second down, and know how the importance of third down uh, when it comes up. It's all situational football. And, uh, you know, when we get in the red zone, we want to score touchdowns. And when we get to third down, we want to score first downs. And that's the way we approach things. And of course, when we take our shots, we want to hit our share of them. Well, what specifically have you seen Baker Mayfield do better from beginning of this season uh, until now? Uh, I think just being comfortable with some of the guys around him. You know, the last uh, last couple of weeks, we've had some guys in and out of the huddle uh, from an injury standpoint or nicked up or whatever. But, uh, you know, just being comfortable with the people around him and, and knowing um, you know, who's in the huddle with him and different routes that they run well and different routes that others run well. And and uh, really just a better grasp of overall where his eyes need to be. It's all about the eyes for the quarterback and where his eyes need to be on a particular play or a particular read or or a particular side of the field, depending upon the play. Even though uh, you've worked with Todd a while and this is the offense and, and all that, and are, are there uh, – Places you want to take it in this time, you, you're in that position to do so. That that might have been different. What he was planning on taking it. Yeah, I eventually want to get to the wishbone because that's what. But I'm seriously, um, you know, someone asked me the other day, like, what changed in it. But and but again, I'm being very serious when I say this. Nothing has changed as far as what we call things. Uh, but I could give five people in here the game, same game plan and you're going to call different plays at different times and for different situations. And I think that's the only thing that changes. Um, now, whether or not uh, we change anything schematically or not, uh, I don't know because Todd and I did have different views from the standpoint of some things. But as far as a, a system is just a system for a terminology standpoint, uh, the system that you run is like really internal and in what you feel and what you believe in. Seems like you guys. Sorry. Seems like you sprinted Baker out a little bit more last week. Was that by design, and does that suit his strengths best? Uh, you know, I think Baker can be a very good pocket passer. But again, if you do different things with different personnel to suit them, and it may not be for Baker per se, but it may be for our receivers, or it may be for our offensive line. You're doing everything for a reason, and anytime you can move the quarterback from one particular spot. Um, you know, if you go to the gun range and, and you're firing a gun, you're a lot better shot. I don't know if you are, but I am. <laughs> if the target stays still. So that's the same thing for a defense. If you know where the quarterback's going to be, you know how to get there and you know the most direct way to get there. So if you move him around, maybe you change that up and at least give him something to think about. Because it was your first regular season game calling the plays, did, did you – you know, go back and do like a self scout or anything like that, and just what did you think of how it went for you? No, I don't think um, I didn't do any self scout or anything like that. Um, I think it went good. I think our offensive staff did a good job of, of just staying the course during the course of the week. And it's like I said last week, you just do your work during the week, and you've got a good feel for the players. You've got a good feel for the co what the coach is like, uh, and what I like, and what your quarterback likes, what your running back likes, what your run uh, offensive line likes to protect. And uh, you know what? You it's a group effort. You know, coaches coach and players play, and uh, they're going to be out there playing the game. So you better be calling things and that they like and that they feel comfortable with. Um, 
or that's your fault. And that's the approach I took. You mentioned uh, the line playing better last week, particularly Chris Hubbard. He was saying he thinks he's made some improvement over the last couple of weeks, especially against the bull rush. Have you seen that, and how have you seen him get better? Yeah, I think so. I think I think Chris is another good example of you know all of our guys. I think we keep our head down and we just work and, and try to get better. Uh, and I think Chris has definitely done that. Uh, and I think. It, at this point in time in the year, we're nine games into the season, and you've almost got to do a self-scout of yourself. Not necessarily the plays, but as a player, you have to do a self-scout of yourself and see, okay, what do I need to work on? And the position coach needs to, what do I, he need, what does he need to work on? And if you do that and do it honestly, that's the key. You have to do it honest with yourself. And if you do that, then you know what to work on, and then you can continue to get better. For a guy like. Austin Corbett, who's kind of learning to play center now. He's never really done it before. What, what goes into that for a guy learning to play that position? Uh, you know, I think his study habits help him a lot from the standpoint. The center is kind of the quarterback of those five guys up, up front. And when the center can do it, since he can see both sides of the line or both sides of the ball, um, you know, he can get people pointed in the right direction. A lot of times the center is getting some help. And he needs to know how to benefit, uh, let his help benefit him the most. And uh, I think he's getting a grasp of that, when to call people down to him and when not to and things like that. But, um, you know, he's snapping and stepping. The, the scariest part for Austin is snapping from the gun, which was any center. But he's made tremendous strides with that. Um, you know, back in May, I don't know if we would ever have thought he could ever snap a shotgun snap, but he's really uh, he's really gotten better and worked hard and put a lot of time into it. And Bob Wiley and Hutt spend uh, you know several hours with him just on stepping and snapping or snapping and stepping rather. How valuable is it to have a guy like Petonio when you have Corbett who's trying to learn a new position and a position in flex at left tackle? Yeah, I think I think it's very valuable. You know, the, you only can take so many guys to the game. So when you have guys that can play different spots. You kind of cover yourself from the standpoint of injuries and in-game uh, situations where you may have to move some people over. But uh, you know, Batonio's, uh, you know, Joel's very, very valuable to us, uh, just as the tackles and and Kevin Zeitler on the other side.